This episode brought to you by Noble Gold. Check out this free coin offer for my viewers. Noble Gold CEO Colin Plume thinks that quantitative tightening is setting up the stage for a gold rally. In his interview with the National Desk, Plume said the tightening is pushing the dollar up. However, he predicts that by next year, the Fed will print money again to restart economic activities. If you're thinking of gold and silver right now, Noble Gold is giving away a free gold American Eagle coin with every eligible IRA or 401k in September. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold. Call the team now at 877-646-5347 to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. You can also use the link in the description or pinned comment. Make sure to tell them Drone Tech sent you. Hello and welcome back. Is it possible that we know these people better than they know themselves? It's been a repeated phrase on this channel, going back to the very beginning. It is always different when Democrats do it. Ever since they started with this threat to democracy narrative, claiming that denying or questioning the 2020 election results is tantamount to being a terrorist. I've tried to remind anyone who will listen that the Democrat party are prolific election deniers. If anything is going on here, it's an escalation with Republicans getting in on the game that Democrats have been playing for decades. And when it comes to Democrat party election deniers, Karen Jean-Pierre is one of them. She claimed that the 2016 and 2018 elections were stolen. Finally, after weeks of this clown big imbecile accusing half the country of being extremist threats to democracy, one of the only reporters in the room finally asked her about her own election denial. And it went exactly as you would expect. A follow-up about the MAGA Republican attention. So if we're all in agreement that it is incorrect to say the 2020 election was stolen, what about the 2016 election? <laughs> I'm not going to go back to where we were or what happened in 2016. We're going to focus on the here and now. We're going to focus on what's happening today. But just in trying to understand the new attention on the MAGA Republicans, you tweeted in 2016 oh, I knew Trump was coming. stole an election. You I tweeted, was waiting, Peter, when you were going to ask me that question. Well, here we go. <laughs> you tweeted Trump stole an election. You tweeted Brian Kemp stole an election. If denying election results yeah. is extreme now. Yeah. Why so let's let's be really clear. That's ridiculous, peasant. We've been very clear that it's different when we do it. Now, of course, this exposes a pretty big gaping hole in their narrative that will need to be fixed for those that live in a bubble and probably didn't even know about KGP's election denial. A big number of those people are stay-at-home women aged 25 to 59 who watch The View. <laughs> let's also remember that she was part of moveon.org. She was not an elected official. Right. She was oh. she was doing her part as an American citizen saying how she felt about an election, whether you like it or not. <laughs> You got that, ultra MAGA extremist? It's different when she does it because she's just doing her civic duty for moveon.org. Which, by the way, was a group started by Democrats and used by the media as a means of getting Clinton scandals out of the news and focused back on what they usually do, attack Republicans. But in reality, KJP has a history in government, having worked in the Obama administration as a regional political director and later was hired as an MSNBC commentator. So it's not like she's just some run-of-the-mill regular citizen just speaking her mind. And even if she was, regular people who expressed their skepticism of the 2020 election have been framed as dangerous extremists by the media. Just a few days ago, Sonny Hostin on The View said that 60 to 70 percent of Republicans are fascists and gave this excuse for her position. 60 to 70 percent of Republicans, I'm not even saying MAGA Republicans or this Republic, 60 to 70 percent of Republicans believe that Donald Trump is the leader of their party. And so if you are saying that he is a fascist, what are they? If you are saying that he is a white supremacist, what are they? Right. If you are saying that he is a racist, what are they? Because if you follow someone that has hate in their heart, and I believe that he does, then you are complicit. So if Trump and some Republicans have questions about the 2020 election, and that makes them dangerous election deniers, 
using their own warped logic, how does that not then apply to the voters themselves who put those representatives in those positions in the first place? It does. And of course they believe all Republicans and conservatives are horrible, inhuman monsters who are a threat to democracy. But now they have to gaslight us in an attempt to save their narrative in the face of such brazen hypocrisy. So <laughs> that was the reaction I expected. This reaction, I did not see coming. Um, but I remember calling him an illegitimate president, and that was wrong. I should not Why? have said that, because he was not a, an illegitimate but president. But that was how you felt. You had every well, right and to that say it. Well, he did not coordinate with the Russians. And that's where I think I was wrong, and I think you that's don't know that. other people well, were But you don't wrong. know that he wasn't talking There was an investigation. Reporters. What, you think I'm gonna explode or something? This is the same lady who just a few days ago was saying 60 to 70% of Republican voters are fascists, in large part because of their election denial, which we're told is a threat to democracy. But of course, <laughs> only if Republicans do it. We have to believe that that we're is another the tenet point of our This democracy. is about what she said as a private citizen. Well, let's, it, let's, let's not forget she was a private, she wasn't even on television. Well, she was a private citizen and that's how she felt. Wrong, she wasn't just a private citizen. She she worked for Obama and Biden. Then she worked for a Democrat Party political organization. Then she began appearing on MSNBC right around the same time she was claiming the 2018 election was stolen. The obvious grift here is a desperate attempt to spin Democrat, left-wing, election denial, and violence as different because their reasons are somehow justified, which conveniently is always the case when it comes to Democrat Party hypocrisy. Now, when it comes to election denial on the right, I think a lot of it comes from Democrat Democrat and media insistence that it was the most secure, perfect election ever. Which is just weird right off the bat, especially coming from people who for four years claimed the election was stolen by Russia because they interfered using Facebook and Pokemon Go ads. Which brings me to Major Garrett a guy I stupidly used to think was trustworthy, tweeting out today about his Orwellian titled book called The Big Truth, saying, quote, the 2020 election was the greatest success of American democracy in history, despite the lies some have been led to believe. <laughs> oh, really? The greatest success in American democracy? Let's lay out a couple facts here that even an election believer can't deny. The FBI actively worked with big tech and the media to suppress and censor real news that could have damaged Joe Biden's chances of winning, thereby interfering and influencing the outcome of our election. Something that happens in communist dictatorships, not American democracy. The same FBI actively ordered its agents not to investigate Biden family crimes. Not really the hallmark of a healthy democracy. Based on that alone, it is easily not the quote, greatest success of American democracy in history. Yeah, folks, I don't know. Maybe the greatest success was getting Biden elected. You just cannot trust these people. <laughs>